Hi everyone, it's Lily Wynn. I am a second year medical student and former registered nurse. I know I haven't been posting videos in the past couple of months. It's been really busy in my second year of medical school. I'm also training for a 50K next week that I'm running. So um, yeah, I've not had a lot of time to make YouTube videos, but in the last several months, you have all sent me so many comments and questions about the journey from nursing school to medical school. So I wanted to take the time to answer all of those questions. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Isabella Castaneda asks, I am afraid of being discouraged by fellow coworkers and other healthcare professionals and doctors. Do you have any thoughts on this? I can see where the fear is to share your aspirations from going from becoming a nurse to becoming a doctor, um, especially to other nurses. But in my own personal experience, most of the time that I discussed wanting to pursue medical school with other nurses, I was supported really well. Um, I had really amazing coworkers who covered my shifts when I needed to take exams or study for them. And I, I didn't feel discouraged by nurses for the most part. There were a couple of times when I would share my aspirations and other nurses would say things like, oh, I could never do that or I would never wanna be a doctor but they never explicitly told me that I shouldn't pursue that. Um, most of the time, if they were being negative or discouraging, they were talking about their own self. Like I, I could never do that, um, but they never like pushed that on me. When I talked to doctors, they were especially encouraging. So I never felt like they um, told me that this is a route that I shouldn't take. Um, I will say a couple of them were would joke about things like, are you sure you want to cross the dark side? Um, but that was never discouraging for me. I thought it was always funny. So um, those are my thoughts. I don't, I don't feel like it was ever um, extremely negative. Sydney Chambliss says, hi Lily, can you please make a video talking about how the workload for medical school compares to the workload for nursing school? Um, the workload is very different. In nursing school, I was able to go out with my friends every weekend um, and really spend the evenings free. In medical school, I spent most evenings studying and most weekends working, um, studying. Because the sheer amount of information in medical school is so much more than what I learned in nursing school that I had to spend a lot more time with the with the material to actually comprehend it and um, be ready for exams. In medical school, I have exams every two to three weeks. In nursing school, we'd have like one large exam for that like block or um, block of information basically. So. I'm, I'm definitely studying a lot more in medical school and the information is a lot more um, detailed. If you, if you think about it like nursing school is taking a 10,000 foot view of information and medical school is taking like a five foot view of information, that might help you kind of wrap your head around how detailed medical school can be compared to nursing school. Just the sheer amount of information is, um, it's a lot more. So you just spend a lot more time with that information before you can be ready for exams. Piranka Betty asks, is this really possible to become a doctor after nursing? Could you please guide me and give me coaching? Yes, it's possible. I'm here. There have been other nurses who've become doctors. Actually, I was in um, a cardiology lab yesterday. The cardiologist who was teaching it was in her 60s, she decided to go to nursing school, or she decided to go to medical school after 30 years of working as a nurse. That's amazing. Like after 30 years, she was in her midlife before she decided to go to medical school. And not only did she go to medical school, she went to internal medicine residency, cardiology fellowship, and became a cardiologist and is teaching us now in her 60s. That's amazing. 
Um, as far as coaching goes, I don't really have time to give people individualized coaching. Um, I, I am hoping that this YouTube channel would help answer your questions. So please, you know, check out my other videos if you have uh, questions specifically on prerequisites um, and MCAT and such. Gio Gomez asks, I wanted to see how you are doing in medical school now. Thank you so much, Gio, for checking in on me. I am all done with all of my systems blocks, which is insane. I just, it's amazing how far we've all come as a class um, starting medical school during COVID. I basically did all of my lectures via Zoom and remote. Um, I've not had to go into class physically for any of my, my lectures, which is amazing. Um, I've been able to be home and basically study on my own time. That's why I'm able to like train for a 50K because I never had to spend time commuting basically. Um, we did go in once a week to do our clinical skills um, with our um, societies group, which is what our school calls our clinical skills group. And that's been really great. I am so happy I finished the last block it was really difficult for me. It's called immunology and infection. And basically you have to learn all about the bacteria, viruses, fungus, and parasites, which, which was just an insane amount of information. Um, it was really, really cool, but I struggled a lot trying to balance that in my 50K training. Um, so I'm so glad I made it through that. At this point um, in my um, academics um, timeline, I will be starting my uh, step studying. So I take step one on February 1st, it's a board exam that I'll need to pass before I can start um, clerkships, which is you know clinical rotations in the hospital. And um, my dedicated period is uh, going to be six weeks long. So I basically just mapped out you know my calendar and I'll be studying for that soon. So thanks for asking, I'm doing really well. Lena Forgo asked, do you mind sharing how you were able to volunteer abroad? Um, so I did volunteer abroad when I was a registered nurse. A lot of that came from my connections as a nurse. So I volunteered in Ecuador because I knew a nurse at Mayo Clinic when I was working there who started a program called Hands for Humanity. Um, they're at handsforhumanity.com if you ever want to check them out and volunteer with them. They go to Ecuador twice a year. I'm not sure how things are going with COVID, but um, they do go twice a year and they um, run primary care and women's health clinics in Ecuador. I found out about the Dominican Republic by another nurse um, that I worked with in the uh, cath lab. And she and I actually went together to do um, post-operative care for a lot of the surgical patients that we worked with in the Dom Dominican Republic. That program was called um, Midwest Medical Missions. Um, I'm not sure if they have a website, but that's just something that I found out through um, networking. So I would say if you're trying to like look for volunteering abroad opportunities, then you can do a Google search or just talk to people that you know that you're working with on your floor um, or even the physicians that you're working with. Tara Lewis asks, how old are you? I'm wondering if it is too late to go to medical school because I am 37 years old, single and unmarried. Is it worth it? So I started medical school at 29 years old. I am 30 years old now, and I will be graduated when I am 32 years old, starting residency around 33 years old. Um, no, I don't feel, I, I absolutely feel like it's worth it. Um, I am also not the oldest person in my class, and I'm not the oldest person in our medical school. I have talked to third year medical students who have um, young children and are in their 40s. Um, the oldest person in my class, I believe, is 35 or 36 now. So no, I don't think that um, that you're too old or, or that you shouldn't go to medical school because you think that you're too old or that it's too late for you. Um, like I mentioned earlier about that uh, cardiologist who started medical school in her midlife, like that's amazing. If you feel like this is the route that you want to take. This is the career that you want. It is not too late. Um, definitely go for it. Is it worth it? 
for you, I can't, I can't say if it's worth it for you or not. Um, that is something that you have to personally reflect upon. For me, it absolutely was. I feel like I am in the exact place that I need to be in my life right now. I love that I have the five years of nursing um, experience to draw upon for my past and that I'm in medical school at the time that I am right now. Catherine Kai asks, so for your um, recommendation letters and references, did you use MDs you were working with when you were doing nursing? Absolutely. As a nurse, you have all of these physicians all around you that you're working with to help you network, to help you get shadowing experiences, and that know your work ethic. So I absolutely asked them to write my recommendation letters and they wrote me really great ones. So I, I think that you should definitely use them as a resource. Um, tell them that you're uh, looking into applying to medical school and they will help you. I feel like all of the physicians that I worked with let me shadow them, wrote me letters, and um, were very encouraging and supportive. And Jolly Nair asks, would the duration of medical school be reduced to three years with your prior experience um, as a nurse? No, it will not. Medical school is four years long. Your nursing school um, and nursing experience will not reduce your amount of time that you need to be in medical school. Manjo Jakes asks, I will be 29 by the time that I matriculate. Are some of your classmates non-traditional students and around the same age as I? Yes, like I said, I was 29 when I started. Um, there are so many non-traditional students now, and if anything, your non-traditional background will make you a stronger applicant and more interesting because you have a lot of uh, real life experience that you can apply and draw upon when you're answering interview questions. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think that um, it, it will be a strength for you. Alexandra Loana asks, I am a 19 year old um, and I will be a student of electronic engineering and telecommunications, but in my soul, I know that medicine is a thing I want to do every day until the end of my life. Is it too late to start medicine next year? It's not too late. It's not too late. Especially if this is your passion, you want to, and envision yourself doing this until the rest of your life, go for it. What are you afraid of? Just do it. Jessie asks, I am a nursing student in Ohio with a long-term goal of, of being a medical doctor too. I'm currently in an accelerated nursing program. I went to a community college before where I took some nursing prerequisites and then transferred. Um, I hope that I am on the right track. Do you have any advice for me? You're on the right track. I mean, if you want to um, be a nurse and get some work experience before you apply to medical school, I think that's a great way to go. Um, being in an accelerated, accelerated uh, program too will um, help you kind of get there faster. So that's great. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, then start taking prerequisites for medical school. Uh, study for the MCAT, take the MCAT, apply for medical school. It's a long process, you know? You just gotta stay committed and um, you can do it. You're on the right track. Zane Z asks, how did you choose to go the MD route instead of becoming an NP? I think this is such a hard question for me to answer, mainly because I don't wanna offend anybody. Ultimately, my decision to go to medical school um, culminated from my experiences volunteering abroad. When I was volunteering as a nurse, I felt like a lot of the impact that was being made um, was from the medical doctors who were performing the surgeries and performing the pap smears and um, coming up with the treatment plans and diagnoses for the patients. I felt like that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to be in their shoes. Um, as a nurse, when I was volunteering, I was taking vitals, I was rooming patients, and I just wanted to make uh, more of an impact. And I know that nurse practitioners can do the same, but I also wanted a deeper um, and more thorough education. I wanted to be able to go to four years of medical school. I wanted the education that I would get from a residency program. So I just wanted to come out on the other end having a deeper and more breadth of knowledge um, of pathophysiology and medicine. So it was a very personal decision for me um, and people who are deciding between 
going the MD route and the NP route really need to weigh their, um, their pros and cons for their own lives. Um, I have the time and I wasn't, um, I'm not going into medical school with a ton of debt or anything like that. And I also got a tuition scholarship. So I know that there is privilege in where I'm coming from to choose this route. And I know that not everyone has the time or means to be able to um, commit to four years of medical school and then residency training. Um, so it was a personal decision for me. I think that if you are choosing between NP and MD route, you'll have to really reflect on the pros and cons of each. And I would really suggest actually shadowing each, um, each role just so you know what the differences are and looking, taking a deeper look at the education level of each and if you'd be happy with um, going the NP route or the MD route. And that's, that's truly a personal decision. All right, that's all the questions I'm going to answer in today's video. If you have more questions, just drop them in the comments. I will try to get to them when I can, but as you know, I am going to be starting my dedicated period to um, prepare for my step one exam. So I don't know, I might be MIA again. Good luck on your own journey and thank you for watching my videos.